Hi, this is William Ramsey. Welcome to William Ramsey Investigates. On tonight's show, I have a very special guest, somebody who I talked to last year in June. His name is Johnny Cerucci. He has a new book that has just come out titled The Eaters of Children, The Pedocracy Exposed. But uh, we talked about, last time when we talked, uh, me and Johnny talked about his first book, Illuminati Unmasked, Everything You Need to Know About the New World Order and How to Beat It. And uh, it was a remarkable conversation, and not only because we talked about that book, because uh, also because the first hour I was talking to Juanita Broderick, and that was June 12th, 2016. So I was, I was uh, one of the early people before President Trump even brought her out onto the public stage. I uh, conversed with her about her uh, retelling her experience with former President Bill Clinton. So uh, that's just some, something memorable that, that I remember. But Johnny has a website, Johnny Cerucci. Cerucci is spelled C I R. U-C-C-I dot com and uh, you can contact him there also he has a Facebook page and a Twitter page he has also in, be- in between Illuminati Unmasked and Eaters of Children he wrote a book called The Secret History The Erased Clues That Prove Who War- Rules the World From Beyond the Curtain that was published in November 2016 this book the most recent book just came out came to my attention he had posted something on Facebook so I'd, I'd seen Eaters of Children it was published September 11th 2017 uh, it's got 693 pages. So one of the things that was very remarkable about his first book, Illuminati Un- Unmasked, which I read, was the level of detail and references. You had like, I think it was something like 19, 1900 footnotes on that first book. So I assume this book has the same type of uh, very detailed uh, and rigorous re- referencing, which I really like. But uh, Johnny, welcome to the show. William, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate you agreeing to this on short notice and... I'm, I mean, this book is really timely. The subject, it, this topic could be very disturbing to listeners. So I just want to forewarn them that we're going to talk about uh, pedo- pedophilia and how it is this this thing that is really uh, being exposed all over the world and in the U.S., the U.K. So Johnny's going to go ahead and talk about that. But before we get to the book, Johnny, why don't you talk a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, and, and I agree with you. I want to put out a, a, a warning that, unfortunately, sex crimes affect a very, very large number of people. So um, just to watch yourselves in, in the audience, especially if, if – the uh, last thing I want to do is is to trigger bad bad memories. But um, who I am – let's see. I am um, born and raised on the uh, East Coast in the uh, Philadelphia metro area on the Jersey side, Italian, Roman Catholic, fourth-generation immigrants – and uh, I, I've come to have find out myself that the waves of Italian and Irish immigrants were uh, unfortunately uh, facilitated by Rome, by the Vatican, in order to inundate uh, America and the United States with Roman Catholic immigrants. And the problem for, for Rome in that time, in the 20s and, and 30s, was that immigrants assimilated. There was a process, legal immigrants assimilated and that's what happened to my family it kind of backfired on them uh grateful for the second chance from uh, from italy my family uh went uphill fought hard to uh, establish themselves became proud americans and that kind of instilled uh rights leaning patriotic values in me and pushed me into the military i spent about 20 years in the army and the marine corps and um, unfortunately, I had kind of a, um, a tough family background, an abusive father left when I was 20. And it g- gave me a bad attitude, William. It, uh, it, it gave me um, kind of like a uh, disrespect for authority. And I think that kind of carried over into my, my military career. <laughs> I spent 20 years in the military and, and, and um, was miserable almost all the time, particularly in during my time overseas, um, it, it just was, I wanted so much out of it and got so little out of it. Well, so little of what I wanted. I, I certainly got a lot of experience and knowledge and because it, my, my life experience has caused me to, to question authority and I had strong values. Um, when for instance, I went to college, I wrote for the university paper and that gave me some experience in writing, but also in, in, in backing up my strong opinion, my very strong opinions. And uh, so that's where it, it began this this uh, obsession 
to as as somebody that's always kind of especially in it was it was a liberal public university out uh, out west and so I was constantly fighting constantly debating and it taught me how to uh, how to do that how how to not give my own opinion but instead try to give facts from quote reputable sources uh, and and that is what I think leads into my what I would consider relatively unique style I call it the italic suspended style because uh, sometimes I, my citations in the book are are, are so long they, they make me nervous that they're they're, they're too long but um, as I was uh, going through my military career I uh, shied away from quote mainstream media because it seemed to have a, a left wing bent and sort of gravitated towards right wing, but still mainstream sources, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, Bill, uh, Bill O'Reilly, all those guys. Uh, and it was okay for a, a couple of years, but they seemed to have their needles stuck. They seemed to say the same things over and over and over again. Uh, and it was the advent of the Obama presidency with his shady background that no one in that uh, arena questions that really started to to tick me off and 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 get um uh embittered with these these sources of of information the what what broke me from it all was the supposed killing of osama bin laden in in 2011 i had in not only was the official story ludicrous and um changed repeatedly but I also had military sources that, that admitted that the official story was was false, was was untrue. I mean, here you have the most valuable intelligence assets in the entire so-called war on terror, and SEAL Team Six was ordered to shoot him on sight and dump him in the ocean. Come on, really? Um, so that was what pushed me off into what we we know as as so-called alternative media, and I found the same situation in alternative media, not. As b- before, I, I hit that point, and I was still in college. I had a um, uh, unique religious experience. I, I, I became a born again Christian. I, had, I went to a local church there at, at, in in college, and uh, changed me strongly from a non practicing Catholic to a, a, a pretty passionate born again Christian. So that's my that's my bias, and um, fit very well. I felt, I felt like I had come home because it, it fit my, my values. And I was like, well, you know, this is where I always wanted to be. And, um, so back into my transition to media sources, as I, I started to look into alternative media, I had a similar situation. It seemed like folks in alternative media were saying the same things. They were giving me a little bit more truth than, than mainstreams, but they weren't giving me the whole truth. It's like, just giving me sy- symptoms here and there. I was listening to alternative media. I came across a guy who started giving names, places, and dates in regards to um, the Vatican's involvement in history, politics, military, everything. And me being uh, – let me back up. When I was also writing columns for my university paper, I started to blog too. And so all that time from the 90s on to, to um, you know 2004 – 2010, all the way up to I'm, I'm, I'm constantly writing and researching, mm. but not doing it seriously. Not you know, it's kind of like dabbling in it. And uh, so, when I finally heard this guy giving this information on the Vatican and the um, the order of the Jesuits, I'm writing, I'm taking notes as I'm listening, and and I'm looking this up for myself, and and I was like, wow, oh my goodness, everything this guy is saying. I can I can verify, and so uh, I started to to blog on that, and and one of my columns did unusually well for for me, and I figured that was that was the point where I needed to go ahead and put this in a book. I didn't really want to write a book because I was I was intimidated by it, and and uh, I didn't think I had the patience for it. Uh, I really don't, but uh, that was Illuminati unmasked in in um, twenty fifteen, and. Um, then the uh, the next year, I wanted to do uh, kind of explain what I call the Jesuit world order, the matrix of of web of lies that have been created. It was my intent to do that. As as uh, instead, what I ended up doing was the historical background to Illuminati Unmasked, which was secret history, is all the all the history that went into Illuminati Illuminati Unmasked looked at in detail. 
Uh, and then it was really with the advent of the um, uh, the Trump Clinton campaign and so-called Pizzagate right. that the stuff that was child sex slave trafficking I was aware of it but had not really focused on it to do deep research the Pizzagate stuff brought it all to the surface and uh, the deeper I looked the more the more upsetting it was the, the the more clear it was that that there was more than enough material to to write a book on and um, uh, basically the long and short of it, William, is the it's the gateway to power. Um, it is the, the, those the elite who are controlled, the one percent who control power everywhere, from from the CIA to Hollywood to uh, to London, are a, a I call them Luciferians, really really evil people that they ensure the loyalty of their their followers, excuse me, by getting them to commit the most heinous acts you can think of, which is the rape, torture, and ritual slaughter of of the innocent, children, animals, uh, I mean anything, infants, toddlers. Right. I, I just saw a um, an article from the from the Daily Caller that that was just out a couple of days ago about how. Uh, no fewer than 11 mayors have had um, been accused of or or have been arrested for some sort of sex crime. Right. On top of that, top of that list is um, Seattle or it, something. Was it? Was a guy Ed, out Ed Murray in Seattle? Ed yeah, Murray in sir, Seattle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but but what, more people what is, are coming out. It's almost like Cosby or something, where everybody says, "Well, I was a victim too. I was a victim too." And that's what, yeah, it, how big it, is Seattle? The top ten or it, top twenty cities in the country? Absolutely, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, brother. It's just oh, tip of the iceberg. Um, uh, so Giuliani, I, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, no. Let's go. When you wrote your book, you kind of went back into the beginnings of history and kind of covered some of these other cases. Because I see the Phrygian Freedom, the first Orgy Island. I mean, maybe we can start at the beginning. Where we're, I mean, because uh, this kind of behavior is recorded in the Old Testament where they're, you know, throwing children to ball and these weird sex cults are taking place um, in is outside of Israel. So, you know, this guy, and even Crowley, and I, I know a lot about Crowley, reference a lot of these child sex and child sacrifice type things, you know? So. Absolutely. And, and uh, that's why, because it's so ancient, almost timeless, uh, I, I, I do discuss a little bit... Uh, try to explain it in in um, spiritual terms, even though not everybody reaches a, a a Christian explanation of of spiritual terms. Most people who consider themselves religious do agree in the basic concepts of uh, a bad entity that most people call the devil, and a good entity that most people reference as God. So uh, I, I think that's that's a that's a fair place for for me to explain why this appears to be so timeless and so all encompassing. Right. Um, you know, I, I go all the way back to, uh, you know, Babylon and, and, Babylon. and really well, Rome. I mean, Rome, Greek. I mean, one of the, I think one of the Roman emperors was like involved in pedophilia. The one that preceded, um, little boot preceded yeah, well, the, Caligula. The little boot, Calig little yeah. boot Caligula. Absolutely. Good for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to give, for, for instance, the, the, the Greek uh, titan uh, Cronus supposedly castrated his own father Uranus and married his sister. Gotcha. And uh, through his father's genitalia in the ocean, and I think that's the um, – uh, oh, my goodness, I have that later. That is the um, – is the let's see that what came out the furies the furies came furies out of the uh, the froth yeah 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 so uh, and then and then uh, Tiberius is the emperor who uh, was so diseased and consumed with lust that he retreated he he was actually too overboard as a Roman emperor and retreated to the island of Capri Capri that's right. 
And uh, there he brought, he had victims, um, children brought to him for their, for his sexual gratification to, to rape them, to torture them. Um, and then he would chuck them off a cliff when he was done or make them kill them too, right? Yeah, yeah like absolutely. In sports or whatever, any, any perverse thing that he could think of, he did. And he brought uh, Caligula into this. And as a result, Caligula ended up the way he did. And The rumor uh, is, is Caligula very... killed Tiberius, right? Or, or suffocated him with a pillow. Uh, that that room. is a, that is an unproven right. rumor, at least yeah. from historical sources. Um, but what isn't a rumor is that uh, Caligula was deeply in love with his own sister, Drusilla, and right. um, had sex with all three of his sisters. And when Drusilla died early, it was part of what made Caligula lose his mind, as well as his his own diseased lust filled uh you know he was he was it's really just incredible as- yeah just as bad as tiberius they say that there was a boat they would put out on one of the lakes outside of rome and there were human sacrifices that would take place there you know so these, absolutely yeah and 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 so this is part of why when i say it exposes across history why so well why is it so consistent that people in power um seem to want to partake of their power by doing these unbelievably heinous acts. And I, I explain this as the, the ultimate, the, 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 the Sauron at the, at the eye, the great eye is, is Sauron, the devil, whatever you want to call him, uh, is, is the, the master, the interdimensional master of this, and he requires, as a show of loyalty, if you want access to this system, I call it kind of like a, a, a devil's simulation, a demonic version of uh, of The Sims, uh, of of a a, 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 um, a a large, complex video game uh, of you know like Age of Empires or whatnot right. simulation game where you build build nations and so forth. Uh, certainly, if for, for for Jews and Christians, there is. Um, uh, references to that uh, of entities that control whole nations. That's that's uh, particularly found in, in Daniel. But um, uh, I explain this as uh, this is kind of like a parasitic simulation over top of what I as a Christian call God's creation. And it, it's, it requires the loyalty for, for power. And I use right. this as an example in my book, how, how the devil takes Jesus to a high mountain and tempts him with all the kingdoms. That's because at that point, that was his, his sword. He controlled all the money, the power, the kingdoms, and, and he requires that, as far as I'm concerned, to this very day. If you want to partake in power, you have to show your loyalty. The ultimate uh, selfishness is to, is to turn off your humanity to abuse children. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, examples of mayors, I don't, let's see, I pull it up here. One of the examples of mayors who was accused of a crime was accused of assaulting a toddler that was four years old. I, wow. This is the recent stories? Yeah, let me see wow, here. That's Where incredible. Was that? Uh, sh- Shoot. Yeah, it's really sick how you how often you come across. Here it is. It was uh, former Ohio Mayor Richard Keenan, a Democrat, uh, handed. Listen to this. A Democrat. The only time I have ever, ever seen a sex offender given a life sentence. He served ten years and will soon be eligible for parole. Richard Keenan assaulted a four-year-old and this is actually very very common infants and toddlers you think okay so you know everybody has these unguarded moments when you might find a young teenager uh, appealing in some way no man these people go after 
children so young they have not even matured. There is nothing sexual in the slightest bit about these small children, and that's who they go after to rape, torture, abuse, and ritually slaughter. And it just proves that there is something something else very, going on. Yeah, something absolutely. like demonic. Yeah. Well, do you know two of Charles Schumer's Senator Schumer's guys? It was uh, one guy's was name was Schwartz, and then the other is. The guy got caught up with Huma Abedin's husband, Wiener, right? They were both pedophiles. I mean, they both were at child porn and everything, man. Like, this I got news for you, man. Yeah. When, when you see something like uh, 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 Lauren Coleman from um, uh, the Bigfoot community sent me a report on Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz uh, tweeted something pornographic and immediately came right. back. Oh, that wasn't me. That was a staffer. Right. Yeah, when right. you see this stuff about so and so's staffer is a pedophile or obsessed with pornography, that is the tip of the iceberg. Right. The that's only, is, like why are people surrounding themselves with people like that? Oh, right? because that's what they are. Right. That, that's the birds what of a feather, they are. right? Yeah. All the way to the top. You do not. You are not granted access. Donald Trump has been sued. By a woman who said when she was 13 years old, he right. raped her on Jeffrey Epstein's Orgy Island, which is, you know, his version of Capri. Right. It is. I mean, that, that building there that's on the Orgy Island, it has an occult design. It's blue and gold. It has, like, weird statues on top of it. It um, is their own religion, and it is the same crazy. timeless religion that goes all the way back. It's the ancient religion. And Epst I mean, Epstein's a very strange character. You know, he came out of nothing. He used to be he a, was school a school teacher. teacher. Right. He was a school teacher, and all of a sudden he got plugged into uh, stocks and Wall Street. It was, he the, got it was the Wexler in. family, the billionaire family of other people. And he's probably and a Mossad here's agent why. and all that stuff. Here's, yeah. here's why. Because they love to use Jews as patsies. That's why he was enabled. He's no he's no big stock guy. No, they no just, way. They a just front. Realized, he's a total front. Yeah, He's a, a he is friend. the middleman yeah. for us. If there's any focus at all on purpose. this issue, yeah. Yeah. that's who we see. We don't see anybody higher than him. Never. Now, and, you know, have you ever heard the story of Jelaine Maxwell? Like Robert Maxwell. Same was, thing. Same thing. Same yeah. thing. She's got Jewish roots too. Oh, you, yeah, but Robert what? Maxwell was just a criminal. Mossad. I mean, the Mossad probably killed him. But the the interesting thing is that this is like an intelligence. But there's also something out because. Something else, because Maxwell himself was a rake, too, you know? He had oh, all kinds of prostitutes. Whenever you see, and I cover that in depth in the book, whenever you see this military intelligence connection, for instance, the uh, the Wonderland Club is a pornographic uh, European-based child porn, right. kitty porn yeah. That was a huge bust, right? right. Was, was, oh, yeah. Well, that's what the media said, a huge bust. Um, the, like 100 and, 140 different police agencies... You know how many kids he rescued? One. Wow, that's nothing. One, and and but the, the, when as far as the big net that came in, trailer park trash right. and school janitors and right. no one of substance Nobody whatsoever. Of substance, right. The Wonderland Club was using KGB encryption codes in order to facilitate. And you know what the, the buy-in for the club was? No. Ten thousand images of kitty porn. Wow, that's ten. Thousand. You imagine how plugged in you have to be to an illegal activity to to um, uh, um, uh, collate ten thousand illegal images. It is completely systemic. It rises all the way to the top. Key people are thoroughly controlled: cops, judges, right. prosecutors. It's like everything. a blackmail thing. What? When was the Wonderland? When was that whole bust? I don't remember exactly the dates of that. Oh. Is it the 90s? I mean, it was a while back, right? Wasn't it at the very beginning of the internet? I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm that. showing the bust was in 2001, which oh, means gotcha. the club was running for decades right. before that. Right. Like it was message boards uh, and all that stuff. 13 yeah. countries, 180 <clears throat> men, uh, led by British officers, 104 arrests. They rescued. Two children, and one of them was actually only rescued one. 
Suspects included. This was from the Daily. Uh, I'm sorry, the Observer. It wasn't even co- wasn't even covered by the, the, the covered by the the Mail or the Guardian by the Observer. Suspects included the usual collection of outsiders, unemployed loners in UK bedsits. I don't know what a bedsit is. A father and son in a U.S. trailer park. Come on, really? Wow. Really? That's crazy. <clears throat> where where was the bus? Was it in Europe? Uh, supposedly, it took place simultaneously in 1998 across, let's see, 13 countries uh, and 104, like I said, 13 countries, 104 arrests, 107 homes, and nobody bigger than someone out of a, t- t- a trailer park trash. Yeah, that's crazy. Come on, really? Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, let's see. Let me, the head... You've got people in running the CIA and MI6 deeply involved with this stuff. You've got, I mean, how many times have we come across the um, the so-called rent boy scandals? Right. Uh, whether it was in in the uh, the eighties for the, the Reagan Bush, right. or uh, decades across the UK. Decades right. Oh yeah, right. tons. It was it Gary Sp- Jerry Spence or whatever. What was his name? The guy from yeah, yeah Spence. Man, he he right, mentioned right, right. untimely Spence death. Was, yeah. I think he was a a it was ABC or CBS. He was a he was actually a Vietnam War reporter. He got involved in the drug trade, and he was having he was having serious parties. Uh, so, yeah. It was, yeah. It was interesting. There was a um, Sean Hannity was in a conversation of a guy who was involved with the Spence Rent Boy cover up. Um, he was an older reporter, and I Craig Spence, not yeah, Gary Spence. Sorry, Craig, Craig Spence. Gary Spence was a was a, an attorney. Sorry about that. That's a, no. See, you kidding me? I can't recall all the stuff I looked up myself. Uh, yeah. So Spence was listening to these parties. He was having like generals and and CIA officers and see if I can get a list of people newscasters that he, yeah oh absolutely yeah. see if I can get a list where do I have oh William Casey William Ca- William Roman Catholic Casey CIA director he had a party Ted Koppel Ted Koppel William Sapphire that's what I was going to say so it was Ted Koppel was talking to Hannity this year and I'm like that guy. Imp- there's couples involved, and he was seen with like a 14 year old boy or a 15 year old oh, boy. Oh, Hannity, Irish Catholic Hannity on yeah. on, on uh, Night of Malta, w- Rupert Murdoch's Fox News. You're not going to get anything real out of them. Uh, Dame Dame of Malta, Phyllis Schlafly was there in one of his parties. Yale Skull and Bone CIA operative Ambassador James Lilly was there. Um, homosexuals, extreme deviant. Commandant of the Marine Corps, Alfred M. Gray, where is that? Went to Spence parties, oh, and the problem with for poor Spence is Mr. Mr. Greg Spence was that he tried to do the CIA's trick uh, without the CIA's knowledge, which was to film people in in uh, right. blackmailable. Right. It was a one way mirror or whatever, two way mirror. Yeah, and, and, and so unfortunately for him, he he kind of got depressed pretty quickly. Yeah, so he just wanted to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah he just it wasn't wasn't uh, to a up hotel to the room. Yeah, it was ABC that he worked for as a correspondent, uh, blowing a lot of smoke for for the Vietnam War. Yeah, so here's the here's the thing. This is from David McGowan. One of the White House tours occurred just after Spence stopped by a Nightline studio to see his friend Ted Koppel. So he's friends with Spence, Ted Koppel. Spence reportedly introduced Koppel to a 15-year-old boy whom Koppel, Koppel later claimed Spence had introduced as his son. Koppel, though, had been a close friend for over 20 years and surely knew that Spence did not have a teenage son. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's why you should... Not you and everybody in the audience should always be wary. As soon as you hear, you have to dig for this stuff. Any kind of so-called rent boy scandal is spin to make you think that these are adult consenting homosexual prostitutes, male prostitutes. Um, And by the way, male prostitutes almost always service other men. Uh, very right. rarely is it that they they have well, uh, their gigolos uh, the or whatever, service. Right, right, right. right. Well, and then, yeah. then there's Barney and, Frank, right? Barney Frank ran a uh, 
male prostitution thing with his lover, right? He had it right out of his out of his uh, his apartment, his home there, and and, I, and he said in Congress, "No, ever bust me because I've got names." You know, he said something like that. Like he threatened to divulge which of these you know congressmen were involved. His Barney Frank's mentor was uh, Roman Catholic priest Paul Shanley. Oh my God! Paul Shanley was one of the serial rapists that led into. Oh my God. The uh, the Boston Spotlight uh, scandal right. controversy the movie, there. Spotlight movie, right? Paul Shanley was a co-founder of NAMBLA, Get the North out. American Man Boy Love Association. I have that in in one of my chapters. That's right. There was something like that. I'm going to send you a picture. Take a look at uh, take a look at your the the message that I put up here on. Uh, yeah, and, and and by the way, Paul Shanley claimed that he had a special ministry to young homosexual boys that was cleared by three different cardinals in Boston, the first of which was Umberto Medeiros. Medeiros, uh, pardon me. That is so crazy. So these guys are all connected. I'm sending you a picture of Barney Frank with David Brock of Media Matters. Oh, and, outstanding. And they're at, some kind, of, they're at some kind of party and and Brock has a, has a choker on. I mean, and this is, Brock yeah. was like this head guy Probably the the main person that Hillary Clinton was working with and giving money to for her presidential campaign, where she was, uh, you know, trying to trying to fight people online. He was inv- heavily involved in that, and boyfriends with James Alafantis of Pizza Ping Pong Ping Pong Comet yeah Ping Comet Pong, Ping Pong yeah. Pizza there in Washington D.C. It's all connected, it's and crazy. and here's here's so why crazy. I say that resistance is rising. Uh, the the sincere people in Occupy and sincere Tea Partiers have to wake up and realize that this is far, far beyond political parties. Far beyond political parties. Everyone in in the political parties is corrupt, uh, particularly on the supposed right. The Republicans are not only corrupt. But they're 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 absolute frauds. They don't even come forward with their agendas. I, I think that that Trump's people are going to be ruled. I keep telling people, if you think that Donald Trump is going to stop illegal immigration, <laughs> he's yeah. he, he won't. He'll stop illegal immigration about as quickly as Barack Obama closed Guantanamo Bay. Right. I have, I have the printout. <clears throat> of Obama's 2008 promises that was in the top 10. I want to say it was number eight of his top 10 uh, was to close Guantanamo Bay. And uh, surprise, surprise, you guys, uh, if you, you think you're on the left, actually that's that's a um, really is an agenda that, that is for us. That's a populist agenda because what happens at Guantanamo Bay is they torture uh, innocent Middle Easterners to turn them into jihadis, right? Because the the global war on terror doesn't exist; it's a complete fabrication. Well, it and has to continue. So, You've got to have an enemy, right? So you create them, right? Make them Absolutely. Off, send them back. And so over where do Syria. they bring them? They bring them to our communist enemies nation of Cuba, and we have a base there. And how is that possible? Because Cuba has been run by the Castro family, which are devout Roman Catholics, Jesuit trained. Uh, and, and, and that is who is behind the war on terror. Where did the Castros go to school? Do you know? Did they go to school in Cuba? Wasn't Castro Abs- educated yes. in the States? Uh, Fidel, I, I don't have, I have to look it up. Fidel went to no fewer than three separate Jesuit schools, oh, Fidel did. Uh, and um, his brother, is it Rafael? Raul. 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 Raul, Raul was an altar boy. Good Roman Catholic, good, good Roman, Roman Catholics, Catholic. uh, and and they've always been in tight with the church. They, they the the Vatican has played games with them off and on, or pretending to be against them, but but uh, they they've always been very tight. And by the way, I don't want to offend uh, Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. Hey, look, this is about your leadership. Your leadership is absolutely poisonous, and I think a very large number of Roman Catholics can agree with us on this. Well, that's inter. I mean, that's another that's another kind of focal point for this whole child pedocracy is the catholic church all over the world i mean if you look under the stones of even the what was it pope from what was the guy from germany wasn't he the guy who was involved in tons of cover-ups it was uh 
Who Ratzinger? Ratzinger, yeah. The Pope, Pope Benedict, yeah. absolutely, whom his own brother was a serial child rapist, ah, see, whom he that. covered for. And uh, Joseph Ratzinger, member of the Nazi youth, who was from, uh, I think he was the Cardinal of Bavaria, the yeah, Jesuit southern, stronghold. Yeah, southern Germany. The Jesuit stronghold of Bavaria, the same place that Adam Weishaupt was from. Ingolstadt, right? And, Ingolstadt University, Jesuit University, that uh, there and now today modern Munich, is uh, has always been a Jesuit stronghold, and uh, Ratzinger controlled the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which is what the renamed Inquisition, Inquisition has become. Right, but wasn't so just, he involved? I remember vaguely remember reading that he was one of the people who moved the pedophile priests from congre you know, from country to country. So they move them out of Ireland and send them to Spain, and then. Move around. Does that does that ring well, yeah, to you? Every single one, every cardinal, every bishop has played this game, and it oh, tells God. the public, particularly Roman Catholics. I think what was disgusting, and I I threw through seven hundred pages, uh, eight hundred pages if you're including the uh, the one thousand and eighty uh, citations and footnotes. I show you, I chronicle again and again and again. Rather than as soon as a pedophile priest becomes known to his hierarchy, rather than immediately put their foot down and hammer this priest, turn him into the police, pull him out of circulation, get him prosecuted, put in prison, they do the exact opposite. They enable the priest. They cover for the priest. They move the priest to new pastures and put this monster where he can prey upon unsuspecting children and families. And the sickest part about all that, William, are the Roman Catholic families that when they find their little girl or little boy has been raped by a priest, they take it to the church leadership. Right, so they go right back to the problem. And it yeah. goes and yeah. replays again and again, right. and, and I mean again. that was the whole shocker about Spotlight is when the reporters went to the lawyer and found out that he had settled multiple, ca you know, tons of cases with all of these abused kids and their families. It was like, what? So you guys have already come back to the church and settled this? Nothing's come public, you know. That was one the, of the big, the pro yeah. The the shockers. propaganda of that movie, the, the the reason why that movie was allowed to be made is the is the lie that the Boston Globe does its job. It absolutely does not. Neither does any major paper. But it still is an excellent movie to elucidate the control that the Vatican has. Uh, another another pro propaganda psyop from the movie is, oh, that's just Boston where the Catholic Church has a lot of power. No, 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 no. That's everywhere. Everywhere, right. Everywhere. Well, an interesting thing is there was that big debate between um, Trump and Hillary Clinton. And there was the Cardinal of New York was there um, with his, you know, all the pomp and all the outfit and everything like that. But that dude is involved in all kinds of pedophile suits. I forgot what his name was. Do you remember Dolan? That? Dolan, yeah. So Dolan. they're that's, all, yeah. That's actually the Al Smith annual dinner. Yes, thank you. Very good. The Al Smith dinner is in name is is um, uh, Herbert Hoover uh, Al Smith presidential campaign. Al Smith was a governor. He was a Catholic devout too, Roman right? Catholic. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, he was a Roman Catholic. Devout Roman Catholic governor of New York, yet another governor of New York, who also ran for president against Hoover and lost. And what came of that is the Al Smith dinner. It's an annual dinner, but it also is, is gets a lot of, uh, of coverage during presidential years where all of the, the frauds in politics – go to the Pope of America, which is the Cardinal of, of New York, the, 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 the Archbishop of New York, and make him laugh. Right. And, and, and everything comes down, and they're supposed to mock themselves and each other and make the Cardinal of New York laugh, which it happens. Look up images. Of course, these images are highly copyrighted, Getty, all over. You're not allowed to share these images. But you could do an Internet surf. And look up the Al Smith dinner and see every single prominent name through history from the 50s on through today. You will be shocked to see the number of people who hammed it up in front of the Cardinal of New York to make him laugh. Right. Yeah. Um, in, in July 2013, documents made public during bankruptcy proceedings 
showed that Cardinal Dolan had sought permission to move $75 million in church funds to protect the assets from victims of clerical abuse. Incredible. Well, not only that, but... but the, here's, uh, here's one for you. In a letter to the Vatican requesting permission to move the funds, Dolan wrote that by transferring these assets to the trust, I foresee an improved protection for these funds from any legal claim or liability. So he knew exactly what he was doing. Not only that, but many of these cardinals are themselves pedophiles are just covered for. Um, another cardinal of New York, uh, Spellman, was out Spellman. outed by, um, by Detective Rothstein. As a as a pedophile, pedophile. Gotcha. those those the, the cardinals and bishops are very very covered for they're they're not allowed. I was surprised when I saw the uh, uh, Archbishop Cardinal Pell have complaints about him. The only complaint that was allowed to surface was one that occurred uh, when he was in seminary, and uh, since then no other complaints have been allowed to to surface. But um, he is known as the protector of Gerald Ridsdale, an absolute serial monster there in Australia. And, of course, now Cardinal Pell Pell, is the third most powerful cardinal uh, in the world. He he, uh, handles um, uh, finances for the Vatican. Incredible. It's incredible. I actually have been researching like a lot of these disappearances of young men. And one of these places I focused on was Jane St. John's. It's a private school and Catholic kind of training place that's northwest of downtown Minneapolis. And all these priests have been busted. They've paid out millions of dollars. So at the same time these priests are paying out millions of dollars, the, the school is raising money. So it's almost like a wealth transference, transference scheme for this school that's in Minnesota where they just are on a tear sexually abusing men and then raising money and just paying it out to abuse victims. It's incredible. I mean, that's just another... Another place in many places that's like that. Um, Boys Town is actually not just an orphanage in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. It's a municipality. It's its own school district, and it is known as one of the wealthiest square miles in the world. Interesting. Just because of donations from all over the country? Oh, not donations. There's no way donations covers. I mean, if anybody has seen, I don't know if you've seen, William, I'm, I'm sure you have. I know Omaha Yorkshire. very well. I have relatives in Omaha, so I've actually been to Boys Town. The Yorkshire documentary, Conspiracy of Silence, right. uh, was actually a cover-up in and of itself. But it, it, it outed in 1993. Val Peter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know director Val Peter, Val Peter uh, 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 Monsignor Val Peter. I've actually, it, shook, uh, I've actually shook Val Peter's hand 20 years ago. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. And his brother. Um, and his brother. It, in that documentary, admitted that um, the orphanage alone was raking in five million dollars uh, in so-called donations. It had a thirty-four million dollar uh, uh, chest, more chest savings yeah, account. Thirty-four of thirty, and that was in nineteen ninety-three dollars. And oh. by the way, as far as I'm concerned, that um, documentary was an absolute cover-up. Uh, for for instance, for instance. Uh, let me get the details. Is it true? Well, Boys Town is perceived perceived in that city in Omaha as this very clean, very upstanding way to reform boys. Charles Manson stayed in Boys Town, um, so he did didn't, for yeah, two weeks. Yeah, and, it didn't work he, out for him. But he 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 must have experienced. He was actually recruited there by a Roman Catholic priest from a uh, uh, from a young man's prison, from a juvenile detention center. He was recruited by a priest into Boys Town. And apparently, whatever it was they had in mind to do to him, um, he didn't like it very much. And he skipped within two weeks. And I have a, a, a whole chapter dedicated to it. It's a fascinating story. But yeah, I mean, Boys Town, on the on surface, all these things have this uh, public front that these are all benign, well-meaning things. And then you look behind the curtain. It's just incredible what goes on, what people get away with, you know. Anything else you want to cover Regarding, you know, some of the Catholic involvement in this pedocracy or, you know, do you want to, there were some other things in your book like Charles McQuaid out of Ireland and these other kind of uh, interesting, the, the patron saint of Nambla we could talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we'll touch on, um, we'll touch on Manson a little bit because okay. he was actually recruited there. He was recruited to Boys Town 
Let's see if I can pull up a detail or two. By a Roman Catholic priest that uh, who was the chaplain of a supposed uh, juvenile public juvenile detention center. Manson was also raised in a uh, an orphanage controlled by the, the Knights uh, at Gibalt, G-I-B-A-U-L-T. Never heard of that, yeah. Another Roman, yeah, not surprised. Another Roman Catholic. Uh, I'm sorry, not I'm sorry. The 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 Knights of Columbus at Gibalt, gotcha. uh, and um, that was part of his uh, uh, experiences as a juvenile. And uh, what is really crazy is it was a public court that put him there. Interesting. It was a public court that put him in a Roman Catholic orphanage. And then he was um, uh, at the Plainville, Plainfield Juvenile Correction Facility for boys in Indiana. Uh, and that's where a Roman Catholic priest, if I can see if I grab his name real quick, Powers, Father Powers, came across, came across him at the Plainfield Juvenile Correction Facility and recruited him for Boys Town. He had something in mind, I'm sure. Interesting that uh, Charles Manson didn't like very much. And after a very short stay, uh, he uh, basically escaped. And um, later on, uh, would be involved in this uh, supposed cult. And uh, several members of the cult were also um, Roman Catholic, Jesuit trained Patricia Krenwinkel, who was the, the matron of the cult, was a Jesuit-trained Roman Catholic, and she's considered... Oh, by the way, uh, Charlie Manson never pulled a trigger, n- never right. never killed anybody. That's true. Uh, at uh, the, the, mo- the most uh, well-known of the victims, uh, Abigail Folger, Wojciech Frakowski, Stephen Parent, of course, the most well-known was actress Sharon Tate, the... Uh, pregnant girlfriend of Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski also has been actually, I was going to say accused, not accused, he was arrested right. for the rape and sodomizing of a 13-year-old little girl when drug, he was drug visiting yeah, drug uh, Jack Nicholson's house. There was another accuser too, but that was the one. You know, He was supposed to, oh, it, let me tell you, whenever you see a big name going to court, over two or three uh, instances, the reality is, is there are probably twenty or thirty, and the only that have been the only ones that have been allowed to make it to court are the two or three that you're hearing about. But uh, um, and of course Sharon Tate, pregnant with uh, Polanski's baby, was was murdered. She was in the process of filming a uh, a movie. Guess where? In Rome. And she was about to leave for Rome within the next day or so. And uh, uh, it's the movie 12 plus 1 that she was filming. She was about to go there. She had done just so, done Eye of the Devil, too, right? Where she Yeah, and of course, uh, 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 Polanski was, let's see, what was it that Polanski did? He had Rosemary's done, Baby. Rosemary's oh, Baby, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a question of, you know, is, is he, uh, and it's a, part of the story is that Tate was, was using birth control and should not have gotten pregnant and so you never know if his diseased mind was oh you know really this is this is some kind of crazy baby i don't want to the, the reality is is that he was a typical guy who wanted his cake to, and, and and wanted to eat it too and uh didn't want to be connected um surprise surprise now polanski is a jew but sharon tate was catholic Interesting. and sharon tate's catholic background even though she was living as a a a, um, a free sex, free love uh, Hollywood hippie, her Roman Catholicism was getting the best of her, and she wanted to be married by the time the baby was born. Interesting. And that was part of what did her in. I'm convinced. Uh, of course, I'm I'm speaking out in it. Uh, Vincent Bugliosi was his prosecutor, and also interestingly, his biographer. Right, that's true. Uh, and and Bugliosi was uh, also uh, supposed uh, lapsed Roman Catholic and atheist, which atheist, is a very right. common theme. Uh, so, um, 
and I led into, I was trying to tech before we had a technical difficulty, I was trying to explain to you how the connections there in, in Omaha uh, of how Boys Town has been completely um, rewritten to to be a scandal that's centered on the Franklin Federal Credit Union and Lawrence King. Right. Like that's the how that it's a limited hangout, right? They just focus on one person and don't focus on the totality of the whole. And the, I mean it's the same thing happened with Sandusky and all that. It was just Sandusky, but all those other people are creepy as hell. Absolutely. Sandusky's friends. I mean that was probably going on for decades, the second month. Sandusky was a, was a facilitator, just right. like Lawrence King was a facilitator, just the like Jeffrey Epstein right. yep. was a facilitator. Yep. Middlemen. Yep. Excellent point. Yep. It's really true. And what it, it was, the, the, um, the, that scandal in Omaha was rewritten by uh, Nebraska State Senator John DeCamp. So do you think it, that was intentional on his part? It was absolutely intentional. It was, it was a guy that he was told to do that by Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. Um, wow. I have that information in my book. That's he was remarkable. told by Cardinal Ratzinger to to redirect the attention. How, how it is that you can talk about child sex slave trafficking in Omaha and call it the Franklin, Franklin cover-up, which is, by the way, the title of John DeCant's right. book. Supposedly not, he's this paragon of honesty and integrity. And in reality, he was the guy that, that uh, decided to step up for Alicia Owen. Alicia Owen, child victim, um, was – what they did was they, there was three victims that came forward uh, in particular that were interviewed by, by uh, private investigator Gary Caradori. And as soon as the, uh, the Nebraska Senate – Nebraska legislature realized that they weren't going to get any help. Well, of course, they weren't going to help because one of the people that that uh, uh, Alicia Owen said had raped her repeatedly was Police Chief Robert w- Wadman. Wadman, right? Robert Wadman, by the way, is is not a name you're going to get from the um, the Yorkshire Conspiracy of Silence documentary, the supposed uh, you know buried documentary, yeah, right? Uh, and and uh, Robert Wadman, Alicia Owen said that. Um, he impregnated her in one of these one of these parties where he had raped her. So that when he realized they weren't getting any help from local law enforcement, they hired a private investigator, Gary Caradori, who was doing his own research and getting pretty pretty far on it until um, he had a plane accident and he was uh, flying to Chicago. Uh, I think he was. Uh, I think he was flying back from Chicago, right? But didn't right. he say he that had, he had? He had, gone to he had told people he had all the documents and all the stuff. He had all the material. In the meantime, Robert Wadman had transferred to uh, uh, Aurora, Illinois, which was a suburb of Chicago. He was the chief of police there. And interestingly enough, uh, Gary Caradori and his son, his uh, eight-year-old son, AJ, were flying back from the All-Star game. They actually, the cover was for him to go enjoy the All-Star game with his son, but he was also doing research there. And on his way back, that's when his plane exploded and fell very conveniently into the jurisdiction of Robert Wadman. Yeah, incredible. Uh, and so that was part of, of what happened. The FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation that I call the Federal Bureau of Obfuscation, one of the, one of the biggest criminal cartels in, in, uh, in the world, period, founded by uh, um, Roman Catholic Charles Joseph Bonaparte, great-grandnephew of Napoleon Bonaparte. The number of, of Catholic directors are, are insane, right up to James Comey, the guy who, who claims there's nothing wrong with Hillary's email. Right. Okay. There's no the intent. Guy, there's no John, intent. John Podesta, he doesn't want anybody to look at John Podesta's right. emails. Oh, he doesn't want anybody to look at uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. Uh, devout they're, Roman Catholic. All, they're all anodyne, right? Isn't that what Hillary and, Clinton and, said? The spirit cooking is anodyne. You know? That's it's no big deal. Really, it's not a big yeah, deal. No so uh, uh, what the Semen, FBI pig's blood, come on. Writing on Absol- the walls, blah, blah, blah. Uh, our, our greatest enemies are our own institutions. So the true. FBI, so every true. time there's a major, major tragedy, major crime, the FBI shows up to obfuscate, cover up evidence, bully victims, Distort uh, everything. You hear all these stories where they come in and distort the record and actually change witness testimony. TW800, a uh, yeah. great documentary about how FBI agents came in and, and started mucking with uh, evidence there right. that was almost certainly shot down. 
what they did was um, they came in to Omaha of the three victims who had come forward, who had the courage to come forward, Alicia Owen, Troy Bonner, and uh, Paul Bonacci. They quickly realized that Troy was the weakest link. They focused on him. They pressured him. They got him to flip, and they used him against Alicia Owen. Right. There's that famous phone call, or there's a notorious where he's trying to, isn't he trying to turn her? Where he's got, no, he's trying to entrap Trap her to like get that. her to uh, incriminate herself. Right. That's uh, and, and, and he's sitting right there with FBI agents who yeah. have flipped him. And um, regardless of whether it worked or not, she actually said stay pretty strong on that phone call. Uh, it didn't matter because she was convicted of five counts of perjury. That's right. Of uh, five years each, and they gave her 25 years in prison for perjury. Such a crime. It's such a crime. Lawrence King was given 15 years because he had had the nerve to embezzle $38 million from the Franklin Federal Credit Union. You know who had a very large number of accounts at the Franklin Federal Credit Union? Boys Town. Not surprised. Not surprised at all. Larry King, and- Larry King sang the... National anthem at the 1984 Republican Convention and the 88 Republican National Convention. Both Both 84 and 88. He here's an interesting uh, story. I'll tell you a personal story. When I moved to DC, I was in DC from 93 to 96, and uh, I was in Northern Virginia. I stayed in Northern Virginia the whole time. But in Northern Virginia, he had somehow moved. uh, I think he got out of jail early, and he had moved to uh, Northern Virginia and sold cars. My understanding, because somebody I knew had ran into him. Does that sound correct? It, uh, it does. Um, I, I don't have the details on that, but I can tell you that, um, oh my goodness. Um, one of the interesting one things of, is why would he move to D.C.? That I found interesting. So he still found some protection or connection to you know, the, the, the nation's capital. Absolutely. He was, he was totally covered for it. And the only thing that he did wrong was, was to embezzle from the Catholic Church. That's what brought the heat. That's what brought the uh, the government. You know that um, one of the the prosecutor, the guy who prosecuted Jeffrey Dahmer, was a Jesuit priest. I had no idea. No idea. Not surprised. His defense attorney, who did a horrible job, was trained by the Jesuits at Marquette. Gotcha. Um, Monsignor Robert Hop, who was also a director at Boys Town, was made a United States government representative to the United Nations on the matters of children. Wow, that's scary. It's basically the fox in the hen house. You know? he, it is that outrageous that they take these monsters and put them in the very positions where they do the most harm or they mock you, us, the most. Well, that's interesting because that came up in the whole Pizzagate research is that some of these attorneys that are overseeing were actually involved or friends with a lot of these guys in these Instagram pictures, you know? They were liking these Instagram Instagram pictures, and people said, well, who's that person? It's the freaking federal prosecutor for the north and southern district of Maryland or D.C., you know? It's incredible. There were a couple people like that. Like, how did you get in? And one of the people, I think there was an attorney who owned Besta Pizza, Beast Pizza with the pedophile sign, turned out to be an attorney, you know? It's they mock us with all of this when p- part of this that came out, they had um, Michael Thomas Flynn, Army General Senior, was, uh, of course, Irish Roman Catholic, was Jesuit trained Donald Trump's pick for national security advisor. Hmm. Now, the problem was now th- th- this they called it. Pizza Gate, because they were playing with fire. They wanted to use it to get their leg up. Now, at the level of Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, the real power players, which I am convinced are the Jesuits in the Vatican, don't care because either team is thoroughly in their camp. Probably. Hillary Clinton sexual diseased sexual deviant 
her and her husband were empowered by a mountain of cocaine trafficked by the CIA through Mena, Arkansas. Uh, and all the money laundering and everything. Jesuit trained Bill Clinton thoroughly in their camp. She picked Tim Kaine, senator from Virginia, right. devout Roman Catholic, Jesuit trained in high school, Jesuit trained in college, even went on a mission trip with the Jesuits. And he vowed one of the very first things that a clinton Kane administration would do would be to finish off legalizing the tens of millions of Roman Catholics south of the border illegal aliens who had come up. On the other side, you have Donald John Trump trained by the Jesuits for two years at Fordham. They realized he was going to be very useful to them. And so they transferred to where they have control of a public university, University of Pennsylvania. I proved that in my book, also controlled by the Jesuits incognito, but it allows them to give their puppets a public degree, which is what not only he did that, but Ivanka did that too. I think she did two years at uh, Georgetown under the Jesuits, and then she transferred to the University of Pennsylvania. So... Um, they wanted this to get called Pizza Gate because at their level, they're playing games. They're playing cutthroat games, and they wanted it to be a temporary campaign scandal the way Watergate was. And when the campaign is over, it gets swept back swept under, under the rug. The rug. It, right. was, it was Pizza Gate. Yeah, ignore it's it. Not, well, pizza is the symbol it's for not, pet, It's some kind of symbol for... It's a pedophile symbol, you know, for little girls. It is or a pizza. It is their sick. These bastards, their sick connection to um, genitalia. Pizza and hot dogs are their sick code, their code for right. connection to genitalia. Right. But I mean, here, yeah. So, yeah. And I had another example for you, if you wanted to. Go of, far away. Of, yeah. Them go. mocking us in 2010. We had that terrible earthquake in Haiti right and we had a supposed um, businesswoman from Idaho named Laura Silsby right who had conned a collection of eight Baptist missionaries to go to Haiti to rescue children well the children that they rescued they rescued 33 of them. An interesting, right. interesting number. number, right? And they rescued children by basically kidnapping them. Right. They still had parents and everything like that. They found they, out they, later, they, right? They, they, they talked the parents into, in, in, in their very, very poor country that has just been devastated by a massive earthquake. It still and hasn't so recovered. They show yeah, up. It still hasn't recovered. And, and as far as I'm concerned, they also use money to bribe these families to release these children into their care, supposedly for education and for safekeeping. And in reality, it was for child sex slave trafficking. Um, they, they, instead of, you know, what, what, a, what a real uh, relief effort would do would be to take these kids through government authorities and take them by boat or by plane back to a real orphanage where they could be taken care of. Right. But instead, they snuck them to the 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 um, Dominican border. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, and that's why they were caught. That's that's oh, why they okay. were caught arrested because they didn't have the proper paperwork. Interesting. Uh, her and her um, her and her nanny were <laughs> were arrested. The judge in Haiti immediately recognized that the eight Baptist missionaries were basically a beard, basically a cover, and they were released. And uh, the judge held Silsby and her nanny for conspiracy and trafficking. And they went to jail uh, for a little bit, didn't they? They were sitting in jail when Hillary Clinton had her hubby, Bill, personally intervene on their behalf. Bill flew to Haiti. They rigged a deal. She was released. And guess where she ended up? By the time of the so-called Pizzagate scandal in 2016, she was now Laura Silsby hyphen Gaylor, right. vice president of marketing at Alert Sense. Alert Sense is an Amber Alert government contractor. So crazy. So basically, yeah. 
they would kidnap the little kids and then they would get paid by the taxpayers to tell their parents, hey, here's an Amber Alert. We just kidnapped your little kid. That is so crazy. And the interesting thing is that the, the Haitian, I mean, that was just one story. There, there might have been stories that came out that nobody ever has ever seen. But in the Instagram, in the Elephantis Instagrams, there was a reference to Haitian sauce or Haitian something. Haitian walnut sauce, which is supposedly like a, an ethnic term. But it was incredible that that ties into all these inside jokes that these awful people were saying. Yeah, the they think they're thing. funny. Yeah. But, I'm but telling they have the you code this... word. They do, they do have those codes. And there are other pizza places around the country and other weird restaurants and other cities that share the same iconography and codes. Well, we had, we had that supposed shooting. Right. At uh, Comet Ping Pong Pizza by the uh, actor Edgar Madison Welch, who has his own IMDb page, who supposedly went into Washington, D.C., wielding a deadly AR-15. How it is that he got an AR-15 in Washington, D.C., a city where uh, I, I, I crack a joke in my book that if you're sitting on the commode reading a gun magazine, you get a SWAT team popping through your window because uh, uh, that's how restrictive the gun laws are in Washington, D.C. So you got this actor who bursts into Comet Ping Pong Pizza wielding the AR-15. He squeezes off a single round that lodges in the restaurant's computer. computer right. <laughs> and no other damage is done because we really are that stupid. In 2010, Edgar Madison Welch was in Haiti building shelters wow, for children. I didn't know that. That's incredible. So his backstory, he's an actor who was in Haiti probably with these other people. At the same time as Laura Sills yeah. began. And the, how much money did the Clintons loot out of Haiti? $10 billion that's just missing and only two houses uh, have been built or something? And talk, and, and talk about a nation that has been thoroughly controlled by the Catholic Church uh, from... from um, uh, uh, Papa Doc, Baby Doc, Duvalier, all those, right. all those monsters, absolute monsters. Um, uh, just uh, nobody even knows how many um, people patients killed, yeah. have been murdered. What was tortured. it, the Tauntaun Makuts or whatever? It would go around. Yeah, and just, yeah, and yeah, yeah, people, yeah. Good for you. Absolutely, they're secret police of uh, uh, Duvalier, uh, based on a. Um, amalgamation of um, Creole and voodoo and Roman Catholicism, uh, basically just big, a big psyop. And uh, he used that as, as part of his terror tactic. Maybe as many as 60,000 Haitians were tortured, That's murdered, incredible. disappeared by uh, uh, Papa Doc and the, the top the, the elites there live in luxury and uh, the, the rest of the population is worse than poverty they actually that's, that's where it is everywhere yeah, they, everywhere. Subsid, they just, actually subsidize their caloric intake with pies made of mud so yeah I, I, it, it is it absolutely is heinous yeah. heinous and and um, uh, whenever there's um, any reason for an intervention by a nation like the United States, that's to set things right for the Vatican, uh, which is what happened when Bill Clinton intervened in, in Haiti. Um, let's see if I can grab the details for that. Uh, let's see. Yes, here. I don't remember that. I don't remember that intervention. I remember there being a, uh, like a power quest after the Duvaliers. I can't remember what happened. Well, of course, there was. Um, oh, good grief! That's what happens when you write seven hundred freaking pages. It's hard to find the, hard to get to the. Uh, oh, it's I know it's in the uh, it's in the Haiti, it's in the Silsby Haiti chapter. It's got to be so. Uh, yeah, so. Um, uh, yeah, so what happened in Haiti is you had this uh, this intervention. Of um, Jean Baptiste Aristide, Aristide, who was a Jesuit priest. Oh, I didn't. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's another whole 
series of dramas down there. Holy smokes. Yeah, he was uh, he was brought back in to power on the backs of American soldiers. That's right. That's what they did. They put him in power. But there is like a pedophilia thing that happens down there also in um, Dominican Republic. Isn't Menendez, that state senator, I mean, yeah, from New Jersey, isn't he supposedly wrangled up and tied up and going to Absolutely. Dominican Good for Republic. you. Absolutely. Right. And, and I got one like, more. There was an army major who was there in Haiti to help install uh, Jean-Baptiste Aristide, uh, and his name was Michael Thomas Flynn. Get out. The general? Michael Thomas Flynn was a major who was personally involved in placing Jesuit priest Aristide back into power. Fascinating. And he would later become the supposed disgraced NSA because his son was playing the pizza gate game a little too seriously and uh being controversial and and tweeting things out uh drawing too much attention you don't rock the boat guys come on absolutely this is just a game we're playing it a little bit and you're taking it too seriously so you're gonna have to step down and i have a clip i have an audio clip and i reference it i cite it in my book where uh jake tapper of cnn whose whose favorite restaurant is Call it ping pong, right? Or isn't that his wife's favorite restaurant? Jennifer Tapper's favorite place to <laughs> right. bring the kids is Comet Comet ping, ping pong pizza. That's in an article by the Washingtonian. That's right. And her and her favorite place, her favorite date night place, was it's Bucks, uh, uh, Bucks uh, Camping sh- and fishing, fishing, right? Which is owned also owned, also owned by James Alafant. There's a kind of an infamous pedophile documentary, the name of which I can't remember, but in that documentary, the pedophiles refer to each other as Bucks. It's like an inside term. Ah, and, and there's that. Yeah. So I well mean, done. Com- and, 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 a comet is like a relationship that heats up and flames out. You know, so it's a short-term personal relationship. And then ping pong has all kinds of weird sexual terminology, you know? There's, it's like, uh, it's a sexual term, ping pong. There was also a reference. It's all sexually in, charged. Yes, there's also a reference in one of the many remakes. Vladimir Nabokov in 54 wrote Lolita. Right. Is a, um, a, a, a fictional novel about a pedophile na- named Humbert Humbert. That's right. Yeah. And uh, it's had several remakes and one of them i want to say uh stanley kubrick yes that's correct did one of them with uh, james mason and peter sellers and in the beginning J- uh, uh sellers uh asked james mason to a game of roman ping pong right that's right so like there's all these hints and nods yeah and you only get them if you're if you're in, in if you're part yeah. of the in crowd oh uh we have the pedophilia symbolism like the triangle within a triangle that i that i show in my book is actually printed on uh sheriff's badges deputy badges it's amazing have you ever seen the one what is it uh uh, baldwin where there's a a commercial i have it on my uh youtube channel william ramsey investigates he's in a commercial where they're playing ping pong and there's the ping pong symbol there all these occult numbers and i'm like which baldwin alec baldwin the guy it's the frequent guest of james elephantus to his orgy island Really? So yeah, Baldwin Alec was involved. Baldwin's on the guest list. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh, very I didn't large. All oh, there's oh. so many famous people on oh, yeah. there. Courtney Love, the guy from House of Cards, or whatever his name is. I mean, there's just so many. Well, yeah, you wonder, you you wonder about what happened to her husband when you see she, how plugged in she is. Oh, no question. Do you think that she's not connected to sketchy people? Very often. I mean, you have well, who these benefits people. from the de- who benefits from the death of Kurt Cobain if you're married to him. Right. Absolutely. And she rode him. She rode that. She rode that very, very effectively. Got where she wanted to go. Um, you and have a lot of these. Fully into the cult, the occult. You should see the daughter's Instagram account. That's incredible. It, it's almost like a favor from from the Godfather of of uh, you know for this is satanic Godfather. You go and you get a favor. I'm absolutely convinced that Jackie Kennedy did that with uh, John the Twenty Third. Really. And. Um, when was he murdered? 63? Was it November, November 11th? Never, never, November 22nd. 22nd. And it was 63, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. 
And it was a year prior in 62 that she had a personal audience with uh, John the 23rd. And I'm absolutely convinced that that was part of the impetus where she had complained to John the 23rd uh, about Jack's um, embarrassing adulteries. And um, that was just the final, the final impetus. They had more than enough um, uh, reason to do him in. They, they really. There was conspiracies uh, around that guy. He made enemies with everybody. I mean, he uh, I think the worst coming, thing, that, the worst thing he ever did, was to threaten to to smash the CIA into a thousand parts and scatter it to the winds. Because the CIA is organized crime. No Period. Question, yeah. CIA, the CIA is organized crime everywhere. And if you, you take out the, what I call the Catholic intelligence agency, I've got a Catholic Herald news uh, column where they uh, sheepishly admit there are so many Catholics at the agency that they call it Catholics in action. So if you threaten the, the CIA and then you make yourself really, really vulnerable with, with this, this terrible behavior, I mean, you had um, – they felt that they had him blackmailed yeah. with uh, sex slaves like Marilyn Monroe, and and he didn't care. He was care, he right. was gonna have his cake and eat it too. He was gonna he was gonna run around with his pants down and then try to be his own president at the same time. You couldn't have a more dangerous, volatile combination. And they so say after, he had a psychotic break. You know, he was doing he uh, LSD was funneled through him from Dennis Leary. I mean Timothy Leary to Mary Pincho Meyer to john it was one of his lovers to john f kennedy while he's a president guy was freaking dosing you know it's crazy well that fits perfectly yeah. because what they 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 gave tactical command of the assassination to cord meyer, cord meyer his wife yeah, and his that's wife, from that's wife. from e howard hunt cord yeah. meyer was the tactical commander of the assassination because jack had humiliated him by having sex with his wife. And there was a lot of weird things. Like uh, Kennedy seemed to be really gloat in front of people's faces and do play little mind games like that. At the time, he didn't shake the hand of who was the CA head at that time. Oh, it was uh, John Foster Dulles. No, it was one of the Dulles brothers. You ever see that picture? Alan where, Dulles. Yeah, he refuses to shake Alan Dulles' hand. So there's well, a lot of things that just pissed tons Dulles. of people off. Yeah. He fired Dulles after the Bay of Pigs. Right. And by the way, the Bay of Pigs was yet another sickening, disgusting, despicable betrayal of patriots in a communist country. I have listed this in secret history and referenced it again in Eaters of Children, how the CIA, the Catholics in action, played this unbelievably traitorous game of trying to get patriots in oppressed communist nations to revolt to out themselves so that they could step back and let the the power of of that communist nation, which is controlled by the Catholic Church, crush those patriots. They did it at least three times that I have chronicled. That's interesting. In, uh, in Hungary, in Czechoslovakia, and at the Bay of Pigs. Each and every time, unbelievable traitors at the CIA and MI6 put dramatic effort into getting good patriots in those nations to rise up and revolt under the promise of help from the West. And as soon as they do, those traitors turn their backs and turn them over to those communist nations where they can therefore be crushed. And it was, com it was absolutely planned. The Bay of Pigs was not a, not a scandal, not an accident, not an aberration. It was absolutely planned treason from the beginning. And uh, um, I, I believe that Jack Kennedy was in the dark about it. He, 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 um, one of the reasons why he fired Alan Dulles. Well, that's the last thing you're going to do. Oh, Alan Dulles, the Episcopalian Alan Dulles, with his brother, Secretary of State John, Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, both good Episcopalians. That's why John Foster Dulles... His son Avery became a, a Jesuit priest later to climb um, to be one of the most powerful Jesuit cardinals in the United States and therefore in the world. Avery Dulles. Avery Dulles. Episcopalians, yeah, that's why he's a Jesuit, powerful Jesuit priest. I've never heard of Avery Dulles. That's interesting.
Oh, oh, huge power player, and that's why you haven't heard of you have you never heard of a name like Jean Pierre Desmet, D E S. M-E-T, also one of the most powerful men in the world in the 1800s, was the king of the Western United States. He was the handler of Albert Pike, who helped create... Um, masonry, yeah. Morals and Dogma. Freemasonry, the KKK, Mormonism, all of that. It's incredible. I'm sorry, Pierre Jean, not Jean Pierre, Pierre Jean, Peter John, Pierre Jean de Smet, another invisible power player. Um, trying to recall the name of the um, Leonard Neal was the Jesuit priest uh, who was at the bedside of George Washington on his death. Interesting. Father Leonard Neal, Jesuit priest. Um, the White House is named after Jesuit Andrew White, who gave the property to the government, not based on its color. It's named after, um, it's on Capitol Hill, which is named after Capitoline Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome. That's why capitals of government all over the world are called capitals, because it traces back to Rome. As a matter of fact, uh, it wasn't known as Washington, D.C. It was known as Little Rome on the Tiber, uh, and later Little Rome on the Potomac, and then later Washington, D.C., Amazing history, yeah. Very, absolutely very. The um, um, architect, Pierre Charles L'Enfant, right. devout Roman Catholic and Freemason. Right, and so I've got that in the Illuminati right. Mass. Both, both the supposed arch enemies of Freemasonry and the Catholic Church. Right. Not. Right. Not the, the, the architect behind it. And, 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 and you have the same sex magic in Washington, D.C., of the massive phallus of Osiris across from the massive domed uterus of uh, Isis. Right. Designed to encourage the birth of, of the messianic child Horus. Or that traces back from Egypt even further to Babylon, the same, the same uh, 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 sex, Aleister Crowley, sex magic. Right. Uh, um, Uniting instead, of the opposites a whole bit, yeah. Right. Instead, with um, Nimrod, Samiramis, and Tammuz. It's incredible, as, man. It's really just incredible. Like you, I was in D.C. at that time, ninety three, ninety six. I had no idea. Just walk around. It wasn't amazing. You walk by the house of the temple. You know where that is with the two huge sphinxes that say oh, yeah. knowledge and wisdom. Those sphinxes represent the, the what is it? The, to know, to will, to dare, and remain silent. It's like a Masonic credo. And, well, it's uh, uh, John Saint John Nepenmuk is right. is yeah. the uh, yeah. is the patron saint at uh, at Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove right. With There's the a sign statue of, of him he's making the sign of silence. Yeah. He, he's got his finger on his lips yeah. because he was supposedly executed for failing to give up the, um, the uh, secrets right? of yeah. the confession in um, Bohemia. Right. So. There's the Bohemian connection for that. Saint and John. the Bohemian Club is a Roman Catholic club. It's a knight's club. I didn't uh, know that. So they're all knights of some Catholic order? It's uh, come up. I'll give you the order. Bohemian so Club. So when, when I lived in San Francisco, I lived on the same street as the Bohemian Club. Taylor, Taylor intersects. So I would walk by the Bohemian Club all the time. And uh, pretty, inter pretty interesting building. Yeah. One of the interesting it's, aspects of the Bohemian Club or the Bo See, the club is actually the center. The Grove is where they all go every summer. And at the club, when the, they have the statue of St. John of Nepomuk, they bring that out every year. So it goes from the club, they do some kind of strange ritual at the club, and then they take it to the Grove, and then they do it again. And everybody makes their oath of silence. You know, nobody's going to say anything that happens here. And they seal them in that oath with the rape, torture, and abuse of children. Once you get someone in to rape, torture, and or murder a child, you've got them. You own them, right. And that's, that's actually not, very common throughout all occult uh, orders. Oaths of silence. Own, oaths that's, that and that's what seals the oath. Yep. It is the Order of St. Hubertus. Hubertus, fascinating. I didn't know that. And it is, surprise, surprise, marked by a Maltese cross. I have that in my book. Fascinating. I did not, you know, I've been by there. I've known about that. 
There it is. Nobody knows the Roman Catholic background. That's part of what a- a- Alex Jones is all about. Is is to he's he's the John de Camp of uh, Bohemian Grove. Right. Is to is to you don't tell the full story. The Roman yeah. Catholic. Yeah. The International oh, and, 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 Order. Here it is. The Saint Hubertus is a worldwide organization. A Nightly Order of Wildlife Conservation is that's a nice cover word. Order was founded in 1965 by Anton von Sporg, who brought together noble hunters from Austria and Bohemia. 1695. 1695. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. That's and it goes back to and 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 that's Bohemia is also code for sexual chaos, anarchy, and hedonism. Right, hedonism. Never hear of someone being called a Bohemian. Yes. Yeah. It's it's it's. It's a combination of the geographic area of Czechoslovakia, but it's also the a code for someone who is a, a complete sexual anarchist Civil and right, hedonist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of what that whitewash from from Alex Jones was, the idea that, oh, it's it's just an act. Meanwhile, we have all kinds of victims um, – Kathy O'Brien, Paul Bonacci, David Scherter – who are saying they were there and they they were abused at the Grove and they watched children being tortured and murdered at the Grove. It wasn't an act. It wasn't a play. It was the real thing. Yeah, well, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, O'Brien and Scherter offline. Sure, sure. Well, listen, everyone is flawed. That's why well, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't say their personality. I, the, some of the stories don't add up, so. There's and 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 that's also part of it is to intimately sow truth with lies so that there is constant muddying of waters and it's very very difficult. That's no, of course, that's why um, uh, Kathy O'Brien never appears without her Knight of Malta husband uh, as as her handler and controller. She may right. not even realize that that she's being handled and controlled. Well, she may not. That's an excellent point. She may not. But they, they're, uh, Ed Opperman did an interview with her and. To answer certain questions, she had to ask him, like, what's the answer? Like, she didn't actually have I, a ma- it's answer. all It's all controlled. And by the way, I, I, I'm kind of disappointed that Ed won't talk about these subjects either. He stops well short of, of, uh, uh, of where I take all the way through to the end, which is Rome and the Vatican and the Jesuits. I think Ed understands that, uh, and he may be hedging, his, hedging himself uh, as, as a way of protecting uh, uh, himself. And, you never know. And that's, no, I don't know. It's it's not why it's not why I do what I'm doing. I, I'm I'm nobody. I'm just an author. I'm just a speaker. Uh, I'm not a household name. But I'm going to do what I think is is right. And it's going to allow me to sleep at night. And I, I don't I don't hold it against folks that know the truth and 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 hold it to themselves. But I, I do hold it against them if if they're in the public arena, and people know them as supposed to purveyors of truth, and they're holding back very very important information. It's it's like I keep quoting on my show Resistance Rising, the scene in uh, in Captain America where where you got Red Skull with Hydra, you know, cut off one head that uh, will do more shall grow in its place. If you don't know the root cause, then you can spin your wheels against symptoms until kingdom come. It will never end until you cut off the right head. And that's why it's critical for people who know the tr- truth but are afraid to go the full the full 100 yards with it that they're doing a disservice to their audience and and it's disingenuous. So, um, you know, not to not to name names but um No, uh, that's completely fair. That, what uh we're coming to the end of we've gone for 2 hours. It's gone fast. But uh, anything you want to wrap up, let's go over kind of where people can reach you, talk about the book, and uh, anything else you might want to add, anything we want to I, cover. I think, God bless you, William, I absolutely uh, adore you, your work and your show. Um, I, I think this is, um, this is it, man. It doesn't get more serious than this. Uh, it, everyone who is in power partakes of this, and they all have, you know, very often, by the way, Johnny Cerucci, J-O-H-N-N-Y-C-I-R-U-C-C-I, Johnny Cerucci.com, Johnny at Johnny Cerucci.com, uh, all three books, Illuminati Unmasked, Secret History, and Eaters of Children are available on Amazon. I use my full name, uh, Giovanni Augustino Cerucci, for Eaters of Children. Just look up uh, Cerucci, and, and all three of my books will come up together uh, on, on Amazon. Is there a way to obtain signed copies? 
Yes. Um, it has to, you have to work with me on it. I, I was doing a, a deal. If anybody wanted to, 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 um, to donate, uh, I was calling it a 50 buck donation. I'll, I'll cover it. Everything. Uh, the way to get around that, if you want to, uh, if you want to buy the book, um, and just cover the shipping, you just have it. I'll, I'll it's got to come to me first. I don't have a reserve of books. Just work with me, and okay. I'll be very pleased to do that. Um, Just contact you either through Facebook Johnny or Johnny at johnnysarucci.com, and okay. I will make you happy no matter what. I'm, awesome. I, I don't have a, a large reserve of, of, uh, of either books or cash. Okay. So I, I, uh, if I did, trust me, the first, first thing I do, I'd be handing these things away because the more of these that get out, the, the happier I am. Um, but um, uh, the show is Resistance Rising on Blog Talk Radio. And this particular subject, I think this may be one of the most important things I've ever done because it tells you, explains to you how they maintain control, how it is possible to have a conspiracy that is kept quiet. quiet and, right. and they have mocked us, William, again and again with, uh, you know, we, we question things like the moon landing and question 9-11 and question the Kennedy assassination. We question the official story and, the, and, and they mock us with the supposed impossibility of how to keep this, how to keep such a thing secret. Right. This is it, brother. This is it. Once you rape and abuse and torture and murder a child, you're in. And uh, I also want to say you think this is the end. And it's really not. It's really not the end. There's always the possibility for you to make things right. It may cost you, but what is is, is it not worth it? There are a very, very large number of people who have been pulled into this evil, evil system that hate themselves, that hate that what that they thought they were doing what that was best for them, and it really turned out to be a horrible nightmare. And I want to encourage them, as long as you draw breath, it's not over. There's always an opportunity to make things right, and the people who are going to do the most damage to this system are already on the inside. And that's my, that's my effort. That's my goal is to, is to call out to people who feel that they, they don't have a way out and to encourage them to find the courage, to find to face the music to face their past and to be able to make things right awesome. and i really feel surely that there, it's going to happen there's there's a reason why the past two or three years have been the most amazing uh as insider information has come out the elites have done everything they can to to muddy the waters as we said earlier yep. to to try and dilute this it's it's it cracks in the dike yep, fingers in true. the dam they cannot stop it can't stop it no it's true i mean those podesta emails were incredible there was a real insight into the pedophilia that you're talking about the sex magic weird blood rituals i mean it was amazing and it's just the tip of the that's iceberg. it that's the stuff president, that he just casually let loose i mean imagine what's going on behind the scenes the president of the united states donald john trump is a partaker he would not have made it into office had hillary clinton made it into office she equally is both a sexual deviant and 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 serial criminal they're all in it that's how you have access to power and the other thing i want to say is there's always a choice. There's always a choice. Many of the people who are partakers in what I call the devil simulation, the pedocracy, are themselves victims. They, they as even as a victim, you have a choice. You can either allow yourself to be warped by what happened to you so that you flip it and you all of a sudden become of someone who is an abuser or you can take your experiences and and use that to fight with and it's amazing this dichotomy even within victims i think uh, michael jackson is an excellent example someone who clearly was scarred by childhood experiences almost absolutely guaranteed to have been a victim of child sexual assault, the um, 
confusion over his personal identity was a symptom of that. The addiction, um, the surgical addiction was a symptom of that. And instead of taking his personal experiences and using them to fight back against the system, he, he allowed himself to be brought into the system and abuse children at where is Neverland Ranch. All of these, Peter Pan, Neverland, Alice in Wonderland, these authors, J.M. Barry, they're all pedophiles, pedophiles dude. Yeah. Yeah. They're all pedophiles. Disney, why is it that Disney is, 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 um, uh, has so many different examples of um, p- pornographic um, uh, illusions in their cartoons? Uh, media would would mock it and make fun. Say, oh, see that? Here's another cartoonist that was uh, just trying to get back at his company because he didn't get the bonus he was looking for. Not even remotely accurate. It goes all the way to the top. Well, Disney himself was a was a was a pedophile deviant who had uh, was a member of the Jacques de Molay Boys Club as a child, um, and uh, the purpose of planting these images in these cartoons is to sexualize our children, is to plant these subliminal suggestions so that your children can be the next round of victims. It's incredible. It's really incredible. All right, Johnny, I appreciate you taking the uh, couple hours to explain the book. I feel like we just kind of didn't, didn't cover more than a quarter of all the information in there. It's a long book. I know that you're a very detailed researcher, so anybody who purchases it will definitely get uh, their money's worth. So I really appreciate, again, Johnny Cerucci. The title of the book is Eaters of Children, The Podocracy Exposed. How Access to Power is Granted Through the Rape, Torture, and Ritualistic Slaughter of the Innocent by Johnny Cerucci. Available on Amazon.com. Thank you.